Hello and welcome to Lessons with Lefevre. Today, our objective is, I can convert metric units of capacity. Metric units of capacity are milliliters and liters. For example, if I wanted to convert eight liters into milliliters, that would be 8,000. Now let's get deeper into today's lesson. Anytime we're making conversions, whether customary or metric units, we need to know when we need to multiply and when we need to divide. I know what you're thinking, but how am I supposed to know when to multiply or divide? Great question. Anytime you're going from a larger unit to a smaller unit, you multiply. For example, if I wanted to convert 19 liters into milliliters, First, I would need to know that a liter is greater than a milliliter, so I should multiply. Then I would need to know that in one liter, there are 1,000 milliliters. Remember, milli means one of 1,000. So 19 times 1,000 equals 19,000 milliliters. Now, anytime I go from a smaller unit to a larger unit, I should divide. If I have 60,000 milliliters and I wanted to convert it into liters, I would first need to know that a milliliter is smaller than a liter, which tells me to divide. Then I would need to know that 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. So 60,000 divided by 1,000 equals 60 liters. Now, when we're converting metric units of capacity, we only have to reference one source of information, and that is one liter equals 1,000 milliliters. And if we reverse it, 1,000 milliliters is equivalent to one liter. This makes the math much easier than the other conversions that we've been working with because we're just working with powers of 10 more specifically, 10 to the third power. Now, as we complete these six problems, I want you to keep two things in mind. One, anytime we're going from large to small, we multiply. And two, anytime we go from small to large, we divide. Number one, 92 liters is equivalent to how many milliliters? Well, I'm going from a larger unit to a smaller unit, so I know I need to multiply. And in this case, we will be multiplying and dividing by 1,000 for all of these problems. So 92 times 1,000 is equivalent to 92,000. Now, three liters would be equivalent to how many milliliters? Again, we're going from large to small. So we multiply three times 1,000. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, that gives us 3,000. Next, I have seven and four tenth liters is equivalent to how many milliliters? Uh oh, I know what you're thinking. What am I supposed to do with this decimal? Remember, we're multiplying powers of 10. So, since 10 to the third power is equivalent to 1,000, what I want you to think about is since there's three zeros in 1,000 or 10 to the third power, that exponent lets us know that we need to move our decimal point three times to the right because our number should increase since we're multiplying. So if we move that decimal point to the right three times, the first thing I would suggest is annexing three zeros. I always tell my students, annex three zeros anytime you're multiplying um, powers of 10, right? So we annex the number of zeros that's in our power of 10, which here 1,000 has three zeros. So this is what our number should look like. Now, we didn't change the value of seven and four tenths because seven and four tenths and 7.4000 are equivalent decimals. Our second step has to be to move that decimal point those three times. One, two, three. 
and the decimal would end up right there. Now, we don't need that last zero there. So what we can do is just get rid of it and know that our answer is 7,400 milliliters. Number four, 930 milliliters is equivalent to how many liters? Now we're going from a smaller unit to a larger unit, which means we have to divide by 1,000. Now, I already see something that's going to challenge me. 930 is less than 1,000, so my answer is going to be a fraction, which tells me it's going to be a decimal. Now, just like number three, we're going to move our decimal point the same amount of times. 10 to the third power tells us that we're moving our decimal point three times, but instead of to the right, we're moving it to the left because when we divide, our answer should get smaller. So here's what we have, 930. Now, where's the decimal point in 930? It's there. All whole numbers have decimal points. They're just invisible. They're at the end of the number. So let's make it visible. Now, I already moved it one time. So that would be 93. I have to move it two more times. Let's move it one more time. Nine and 30 hundredths. One more time to go. And that will give us 930 thousandths. So 930 milliliters is equivalent to 93 hundredths. So I know what you're thinking. That looks different from the other answer. Let me just go back. 930 thousandths is the same as 93 hundredths. If I take away that zero at the end, it doesn't change the value because we didn't move the decimal point. So they're actually the same number. So 930 milliliters is equivalent to 93 hundredths liters. Number five, 4,000 milliliters is equivalent to how many liters? I'm going from small to large, so I'm going to divide 4,000 by 1,000, and that should be simple. It gives us four. And lastly, number six, 16,000 milliliters is equivalent to how many liters? Again, I'm going from a small unit to a larger unit, so I need to divide this by 1,000. If we just cancel out those three zeros at the end of both numbers, that will give us 16 divided by one. And we all know that 16 divided by one is 16. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, you can email me at tlafever at ps48.org. Thank you for watching Lessons with Lafever. See you next time.